Hello, I am Stephanie Joy, the attorney at All Things Social Security and Joy Disability Law. Your video is about to start. I just wanted to remind you that if you click the join button below, you can learn more about the memberships offered at a very affordable price that can give you a little more direct attorney answers to your questions. Have a great day and enjoy the video. Hey guys, sometimes we get questions about the inner workings of the SSA or the DDS when they are fulfilling their obligation to follow the sequential evaluation process. And this particular question showed to me that there was some confusion. So I'm just gonna go over this narrow question and uh, maybe the rest of you have the same, or some of you had the same question. So we'll get that cleared up. So here we go. At what step in the SEP, S-E-P, and that would be sequential evaluation process, well done, um, does the SSA send the RFC form to the claimant? Okay, so for those of, the, of you that don't know, RFC is residual functional capacity. And they're asking about a form being sent to the claimant. There is no RFC form that's sent to the claimant, guys. The step in which the SSA, which would be the DDS step medical workup, or an ALJ would have to do this as well because everyone has to do the sequential evaluation process to get to the end result. An RFC is assessed by the SSA after it determines that you do not meet a listing. So at step three, when they're looking to see if your severe impairments meet a listing, if it does not, then they determine the RFC and then it goes to step four. Because step four is about your past work. Step five is about any other work in the economy. So the RFC, residual functional capacity, and we have, I think, a playlist on that. But in a nutshell, that is where they determine your exertional capacity that remains after consideration of all your impairments as the evidence has revealed to them. And when I say evidence, I largely mean medical evidence. In addition to the exertional level, which again would be sedentary, light, medium, heavy, very heavy, and we have videos on that, then they will, they will determine any non-exertional limitations that could be mental, that could be postural, that could be environmental. So once they get all of those little levels of capacity that you have remaining, um, that's when they have assessed your RFC, your residual functional capacity to perform work-related tasks. And again, that's not something they ask you about. They sent you a function report where you could talk about your symptoms and all that. Uh, that is not an RFC form. The RFC is an assessment. Now, do they have RFC forms that they give to their own doctor to record his opinion of the RFC? Yes, they do. Um, they will also potentially give it to, I don't see this so much anymore, but a treating provider. But, you know, I would tread with caution if you think you want to want that because the treating provider will not be trained in what all these different terms mean and what might seem as describing someone as severely impaired, you being severely impaired, um, when they don't know what law applies to that word, that criteria or that level that they have ascribed to you, they don't realize that they just described you as not fully disabled, boom, lost, disabled, uh, not found disabled. So those generic RFC forms that you find on the internet, which some can be from the SSA, but that is not your friend. Uh, I have one or more videos on why you would never wanna do that. Uh, your, your representative, if they are the type that gets that involved and prepares interrogatories of the same nature that are designed to determine a treating provider's opinion of what residual functional capacity you have in hopefully some tailored limited tasks, as opposed to giving all, you know, dozens and dozens of them that don't even apply to you. Um, that is, I think, a good thing. And I know we do that when it's um, possible. 
but you, in my opinion, you do not ever want to send your treating provider a blanket generic RFC form, aside from the fact that they probably won't fill it out. Uh, if they do, you're probably going to get answers that are going to put a fork in your case. Okay, so RFC form, that is that is in the internal bowels of the SSA during the sequential evaluation process, pro process at step three. And no, they're not going to ask you about it. They already asked you what you can and cannot do in your function report. And you had opportunity in your application and you had opportunity in your appeals if you have appealed. And now with the new work history report, they actually give you an opportunity to describe what, what about your impairments and symptoms would prevent you from doing job A, B, or C, any and all those jobs that you've had in the last five years. Um, and as you know, that five years is the newer limitation on years going back that they can look at. And it used to be 15 until June of 2024. So we're very thrilled with the five-year limit. It was incredibly and shocking when it happened. It's the best thing next to sliced bread. Okay. So again, at what step in the in the SEP process, does the SSA send the RFC form to the claimant? They don't, okay? That all goes on behind the scenes and they're not gonna tell you where they're at in it. They're not gonna go blow by blow. They just do their job, get it done. And if you don't like the result, you appeal it. That's how that works, okay? Alrighty, I will, oh, I should add, and this is what I said to the viewer that asked this question. If you have an ALJ hearing and get a decision, that is when, a decision comes where you first know what RFC was ascribed to you. The lower levels do not tell you that when they deny you or when they award you. You're just not privy to it. In theory, you could order your file, the part that's not otherwise readily available, from the SSA and ask for particularly the um disability determination explanation. And that will let you know whether they put you at sedentary, light, medium, what have you. And presumably those other, if there are any other limitations other than your exertional capacity, um, but good luck getting it. Uh, a lot of times you have to ask multiple times and they ignore. So anyway, there is that. If you have a representative, once you are denied, the representative can get it from the electronic file. If the representative is a, a heavy hitter in the field and, and practices it a lot, it's only after a, and I, I take that back, it's only after a denial, after recon and you've appealed for ALJ that they can see that. Um, we are trying really hard to get the SSA to now give us, be a little more transparent earlier on, because if we had that information, when you got denied an initial, we would know what they're lacking. We would have some indication of what they need to see the realities of your case um, because we see it already, but apparently they don't see the evidence the way you and I do. So if we could see what they are not quite seeing, we might be able to spoon feed it to them. All right, guys, have a good one. I hope that answers that question if anyone else was curious about it and uh, talk to you later. Keep the questions coming. Bye guys.